Hey, what's up? It's Nick. I'm here to do a quick video about fire for you. For this first one, I picked what I think is the most cool, most powerful fire resource that everybody needs to know, uh, but yet most people don't actually ever have to interact with. Uh, it's just a great introduction to the overall world of fire for you. And that resource is structure definition. So going super meta on you to start. First, you need to understand that fire is a very groundbreaking standard, not because it's restful, not because it's sort of new and hot, it's because it's programmable. And what I mean by that is that fire itself gives you this whole toolbox of tools to both write fire itself within its own language and do all kinds of things like extend it, write validators that kind of automatically understand what you're looking for do uh, crazy things like say, okay, you're a fire server, what can you actually like support? There's all these really programmable concepts within fire um, that, that make it really unique. So I think fire is gonna be around forever. And the reason is structure definition. If all of fire was suddenly blown up and all the servers in the world were wiped and you only had structure definition less, left, you could essentially redefine fire because all fire is defined as structure definitions. Um, to, to walk you through what that looks like, we need to go through the sort of seven things that you can use structure definition for. So first, structure definition can be used for a data type. Now fire defines data types um, like any other programming language will allow you to find types, but they're fixed. Um, the, the list of data types is pretty large in fire. So there's kind of a lot you need to understand everything from a quantity to a codable concept. But these really form the backbone of fire resources. So you have a very consistent pattern as you go between different resources, um, especially for things like codable concepts where you wanna have the same consistent properties um, the, the actual sort of key values within those are different, but you have a very similar pattern across resources. So it's not like these little fiefdoms. Um, Fire does not let us extend this though. So this is no, no for creating your own data types. But Fire does let you constrain data types. And the example they give is uh, say money. So money is a quantity and I can apply another structure definition to it. Here it is. And it turns into money. And I can make rules. So I can say it has to be positive. Uh, it can't have more than two decimal places or something like that. Um, however you want to sort of constrain and slice an existing data type is, is fair game. Um, now in, in practice, most people probably won't use this for st structure definition. like there aren't that many needs for types. Um, and it does kind of create this implementation specificity that, that could cause problems down the road. Um, so that's data types. Next, structure definition also defines resources. So this is really powerful. Essentially every resource in fire is a structure definition. So patient, observation, Every single one of the 160 plus resources is its own structure definition. Um, from the fire docs, you can go and look at the structure definition of any given resource and, and sort of see that. And when you look at the fire docs, you're also looking at rendered structure definitions. So essentially those little tables you see in the fire documentation come from a structure definition being rendered into HTML. It's really, really sort of the core of everything, everything fire. Um, now, again, fire says we can't make our own resources. So this is not open for modification, but I should say it's, it's closed for addition, but open for modification. And that is what we call a profile. And you'll probably hear the term profiling fire a lot um, because it's actually gonna be a really common thing um, there's the US core profiles that US CDI is mapped to um, that, that a lot of EHRs are being required to implement. And really all that is is a structure definition applied to one of these resources. 
So it becomes the profiled patient and you can make rules. Say for example, I wanna have a race extension defined or maybe the patient must have a first name. Those are all within the structure definition language. So it's just this line item in that, in that, lang that programming language of structure definition that you had. Next, structure definition defines this concept of extensions. And extensions are a very big topic, so we're going to cover that in a later video. Uh, but for now, you should just know that because resources are closed and because we're, you know, we're sort of only allowed to profile them, if we want to add data to a resource, we need to make this thing called an extension. So extensions are their own thing, and, and there is sort of just a one big extension type kind of thing. It, it defines the structure definition. But then you can also make custom structure definitions um, for extensions. So, okay, so let's say I want to make a new extension and maybe I want to extend patient. Uh, I want to make an extension called eye color or something. I would use structure definition to write what the structure of that eye color extension is. I need to pick a data type. Maybe I need to say, okay, this comes from a set list of fields, uh, a set value set you know, blue, brown, green, hazel. Um, I get to put all those things in, in this uh, extension definition form of a structure definition. Okay, so essentially I'm taking the extension idea, extending it even further. You could say I'm profiling extension. Uh, and then you can profile this even further to put constraints on it. So just like I could put constraints on data type, um, I am I'm able to, again, do, do a binding like that to say eye color type. Um, or maybe I have to say, you know, this needs to be required um, or a certain piece of the extension needs to be required rather. Uh, or, you know, maybe you have to have more than one, or you have to have a certain code in a certain place. Um, and that's extension constraints. Cool, so one last thing you can't do is you can't modify the base extension, but that doesn't make sense necessarily to do. Um, so cool, that was, that was my uh, little, well, actually I have more to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do another page here. Um, all right. Starting now. Okay, so at this point, you kind of understand what structure definition can do, but what does it actually look like? Well, there's really three big parts of a structure definition that you need to look at. Uh, one is called mapping. Another is the snapshot. And finally, the differential. Mapping is really simple. Uh, you can do it in a couple of different ways, but what the idea is, is that the structure definition can have uh, pointers or sort of logical relationships to other standards or other concepts. So if you look at the fire spec and you say, you go to the mappings tab, um, all that gets rendered from the mappings of a structure definition and it'll say mappings to V3, mappings to CDA, mappings to V2. Um, you, know, you could do mappings to maybe like uh, a different competing standard like a Redox API or something. Um, so it's pretty open-ended. You can have it be either discrete and sort of programmable or you can have it just be free text. Um, most mappings today are not that reliable, uh, so you, you shouldn't necessarily use them as a source of truth, but it's there for, for future use, essentially. Next, um, snapshot and differential serve the same purpose, but they, they're sort of two different ways of implementing a profile or say a base resource definition and structure definition. Snapshot is sort of a whole picture of all the fields within a resource or a data type or you know an extension like we've talked about. And differential is saying, okay, 
take the base and here's the delta. So it's essentially like you're just defining the diff on top of the existing resource. Um, you can see where both might be useful in different circumstances. If you're starting from scratch, you sort of need a snapshot. But if you just want to make a few rules on top of, say, patient, you would use differential. Uh, so mapping says where you can fit data from other places. Snapshot, full picture of the thing. And the differential is just the delta. All right, I hope everyone is super enthusiastic about structure definition now. Uh, again, I think this is the, the coolest resource, the most important resource. And that's why we're starting with it. But um, hit, hit up the comments and like and subscribe. <laughs>